life at higher low Reynolds numbers. Look at this manta ray, how it effortlessly glides through the water. How can this large fish swim by using seemingly so little energy? A recent study by Brown and colleagues tagged manta rays and found that they ascend relatively quickly from depth and then slowly glide back down, traveling by using the least amount of energy. Things look very different for small fishes. This cardinal fish is struggling in the current and it's only moving as long as it's propelling itself forward with its pectoral fins. Let's look at this in slow motion. To understand the difference in swimming styles, let's look at a paper by this man, Edward Purcell, called Life at Low Reynolds Numbers. He points out that in swimming, Inertia keeps you going, whereas viscosity slows you down. The ratio between inertia and viscosity is the Reynolds number, named after Osborne Reynolds, whom you can see a number of times here. Inertia is given by the density of the medium, seawater, here denoted as rho, the size of the swimming fish and its velocity. Viscosity is just given by a single constant mu. Small fishes have small Reynolds numbers and viscosity ones. Large fishes, like manta rays, have large Reynolds numbers and inertia rates. Now we understand the difference in swimming. The small fishes all have to fight viscosity and stop moving as soon as the fins stop flapping. Things are very different for a manta ray, which can glide through the water using inertia. Using the Reynolds number, we can also understand why manta rays somewhat look like stealth bombers and why treasure sharks somewhat look like predator probes. These old objects moving with high Reynolds numbers. Because the density of air is much less than water, but these aircraft are also larger and move with higher speed. 